May, 1775. Dearest mother, Dr. Franklin continues to dazzle me. In these troubled times, when so many people are nervous, or angry, or frightened, Dr. Franklin's resolve is reassuring. <gasps> Good morning. Gather round. We have a busy week ahead of us, and I have a special mission for each of you. The delegates are arriving for the Second Continental Congress. Great! The Gazette will cover Congress from gavel to gavel. I won't miss a thing. Perhaps not, but you missed everything else. Not yet, James. Henri, the delegates will need fresh water. Keep the buckets filled. <laughs> I've been thinking, Dr. Franklin. How about a story on our own delegate, Mr. Dickinson? Hold your horses, James. Sarah, I want you and Moses to greet Colonel George Washington when he arrives from Virginia. Assist him in whatever he may need. This Colonel Washington must be important? During the French and Indian War, he saved many lives. I expect big things from him in Congress. I'll get my shawl. That leaves me. What do you have in mind, sir? Maybe I could talk to this Colonel Washington? No, James. No journalist will be allowed in the hall. No journalist? But... The delegates are here to deal with life and death matters. They'll need to voice their opinions freely, privately. Then what in the world am I supposed to do? Someone has to look after the delegates' horses. Horses? <laughs> you may need a bigger broom. You may need a shovel. I can't believe my luck. The biggest story in the world is right here in Philadelphia, and I'm stuck babysitting a bunch of dumb horses. Look, that's John Adams. John Adams? I thought his name was Sam Adams. That's his cousin. John Adams is the smartest lawyer in New England. Let's find out what he's up to. A leader is what we need. What about these? I'm sure Mr. Adams and the others are thirsty after their long journeys. Now get going. Hey! I'm going to nominate Colonel Washington. He's the perfect man to head the new Continental Army. Why not your own Mr. Hancock? I know he has designs on the top job. Impossible. Washington is the only hero we have. The only man the whole country will support. Will New England accept a Virginian? A Southern man is exactly what we need. Otherwise, the revolution will remain New England's war. Excuse me, moi. Excuse me. Ben, who is this? A French small fry. Henri, go, go! <gasps> Pardon, sorry. Hold your horses, lad. James is supposed to hold the horses. I'm the water boy. Come on, Henri. I have to find out what's happening. That bell means Congress is about to start. Oh, but Ben Franklin said no journalists. Am I to understand that you're a journalist, young sir? James Hiller, Pennsylvania Gazette. It's a pleasure to meet a fellow newspaper man. You're a newspaper man, too? Paul Wentworth's the name. I understand your little friend here has a ticket into the hall. Ticket? I've got a bucket into the hall. Two of them. And I've got a pocket full of coins for every scrap of news you bring out with your empty buckets. Coins? I'm all ears. Wait a second. Dr. Franklin said we can't print anything until after Congress is over. And Dr. Franklin is right. We wouldn't want to do anything to hurt the cause. Exactly. However, James, someday it will be up to newspaper men like us to tell the people what went on. And we can't do that without facts, can we? No, we can't. Facts are everything. If you want to make it in this business, you have to go where the action is. Are you game, James? How many coins are we talking about? Quiet, Henri. This is between a couple of newspaper men. Isn't that right, Paul? That's a fact, James. That's a fact. Oh. Pardon me. I'm a stranger to your fair city. Is this where Colonel Washington is staying? Yes, sir. But he's just now arrived. Whoa! Such poor workmanship on this coach. It's an outrage. Allow me to be of service, Colonel. My name is Moses. Who's your master, Moses? 
I'm a freed man, sir, in the employ of Dr. Benjamin Franklin. I'll have your coach fixed good as new. Apparently, our English cousins have contempt for us. They've turned the colonies into a dumping ground for all the shoddy goods they themselves would not have. Moses will fix it, sir. He's very talented. And who are you, young lady? Sarah Phillips, my lordship. That isn't necessary, Miss Phillips. I'm not a lord. I'm just a citizen like anyone else. I beg your pardon, your lord. Colonel Washington. Dr. Franklin has sent us to assist you. Excellent. I look forward to seeing the good doctor again. Moses, the future is in the hands of men such as yourself. Homegrown craftsmen. The job is yours. It will be an honor, sir. The honor is mine. Chair recognizes the delegate from Pennsylvania Colony, Mr. Dickinson. Gentlemen, hear me clearly. There are still those of us who believe in a peaceful resolve to this conflict. We are brothers, England and America. Surely there is another course short of all-out war. The peace died on the greens of Lexington and Concord. It was murdered again at Bunker Hill. There is no peace in the hearts and minds of the countless thousands who have been forced to swallow the vile brew of British tyranny. Mr. Adams, you spit fire well, but the king's guns spit lead. You will lead us down the path to ruin. And you, sir, will lead us down the path to slavery. We can't win a war with England. If you insist on war, you shall have it. But it will be New England's war, Mr. Adams. Massachusetts is free to fight England until the moon falls into the sea, but she will fight alone! Order, gentlemen! Order! The chair recognizes the distinguished gentleman from Philadelphia, Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Friends, I remind you that we lack not in great talkers, but great doers. I find myself in agreement with Mr. Adams. War is upon us, like it or not. Our great comfort is that we honestly and faithfully did everything in our power to prevent it. But war is here on our doorstep, whether our doorstep be in Boston or Baltimore. Forgive me, my voice grows hoarse. Cold water, Dr. Franklin? Notebook? Pencil, please. Not my pencil, please. I hate to nag you, but... I know, I know. Horses. Ah, Mr. Hiller, what have you learned? I learned that when Ben Franklin says, no journalists, he means no journalists. He took my notebook and my pencil. What's ah! the hurry, young man? Ah! Sam Adams just kicked the bucket. Sam Adams is dead? Hey! No, he kicked my bucket, spilled water everywhere. Oh, what a mess. I can't believe this. I'm stuck out here while the story of the century is in there. It is a conundrum, isn't it? Conundrum? A problem. Forgive me. You're new to the newspaper game, but don't feel bad. Someday, when you are a real newspaper man, You'll know big words like conundrum. I am too a real newspaper man. Indeed. But do you have the fire in the belly to do whatever it takes to get the story? My belly's on fire. You tell me what facts you want, Mr. Wentworth, and I'll get them. Good. Excellent. Let's start with what they're up to in there. Is Congress going to raise an army? Who will lead the army? The facts, James. We must have the facts. I'm on it. Who, what, why, where, when, and how? Have you got a pencil? Much obliged. Here goes. Hm. You'd think a congressman wouldn't be so clumsy. Whoa! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Fact one. This isn't going to be easy. I must know what's going on in there. Enough of this tomfoolery. We tried it your way, now we do it my way. It's 
certainly is an exciting time to be in Philadelphia. The city is alive with interesting new people. Exciting and dangerous. Mixed among the delegates to the Second Continental Congress are spies. We all have to watch our tongues. Drill, please. Drill, coming right up. <laughs> He's at Mr. Rodney's desk. Who's Rodney? Caesar Rodney? He's the head man in the colony of Delaware. What he says goes. I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. Haven't you written about him in your newspaper? Oh, uh, that's Caesar Rodney, of course. What's happening now? Dr. Franklin has the floor. There are two voices here. One seeks reconciliation with England. The other seeks independence. I address the former. It was Parliament, remember, which has doomed our country to destruction. They have begun to burn our towns and murder our people. Look upon their hands. The fault lies not with Mr. Adams. The fault lies in London. Dr. Franklin has finished speaking. I don't see Henri. Okay, he's back. He's with... Oh, this is good. John Hancock. He's with John Hancock. I don't believe it. Hancock is not only talking to Henri, he's actually writing it down for him. If Congress does not take over the army at Boston soon, it will disintegrate. All hope will be lost. The time has come. We must have a general today. Gentlemen, I think the solution is obvious. John Hancock is my nominee to lead our new national army. Mr. Payne, you flatter me. But we also have a gentleman available of impeccable credentials. A southerner, Colonel Charles Henry Lee of Virginia. Who was born in England and who would be perfectly happy to be there now. The man we are looking for is among us. And he is a southerner from Virginia. I nominate as general of the colonial army, Colonel George Washington. I lost Henri. He's so little. He vanished when Colonel Washington stood up to speak. Colonel Washington is speaking. There he is. Look at him go. We must have big news. <laughs> Henri has news. Come on. <laughs> Henri? Henri? Excuse me, a boy just ran in here. About this tall? There you are. Where are your notes? I've been watching you. You've been doing great. Watching me? How? With a spyglass. You've got a spyglass? <gasps> Let me see it. James, wouldn't it be better to discuss this outside? Um, yes, of course. Come on, Henri. Hurry up! <laughs> Stop it! That tickles! If you got everything down on paper, I'll be tickled. What does it say? Is that French? I get coins for this, right? Of course, I'm a man of my word. Okay, voila! Here's what I found out. John Adams wants poultry, pulled poultry. What? what? Oh, you know, not poultry cut in slices, but pulled from the bone. Sam Adams wants beef, unless it's too well done. Then he wants mutton. <gasps> Oh, here's something strange. John Adams won't eat mutton because it's a favorite British food. Let me see that. John Hancock, potato soup? He's got a bad tooth. You were getting lunch orders? I can't believe you messed this up. Sam Adams is the one who messed it up. He spilled ink all over my lunch order. Oh, my coins, you will play. What are these? I've never seen coins like this. They're Greek, very old, older than Hercules. The two slits in each coin enable the ancient Greeks to string them on chains and wear them around their neck for safekeeping. Oh, thanks! If you want any more facts... I'll get them myself. You failed me, both of you. And the only reason I paid you is I'm a man of my word. <sighs> How could you do this to me? Mr. Wentworth is an important newspaper man. He publishes a paper I've never heard of, and you made me look like... like... like a kid! I'm new at this. That's it. I'll get the facts myself and make everything right with Mr. Wentworth. I'll help. I'd like to get more of these Greek coins. <gasps> hey, those are mine. You're back to being a water boy. 
This is a job for a newspaper man, not a newspaper boy. <laughs> Who's the water boy now? <laughs> James, what are you doing here? Nothing. This whole day has been a big waste. What are you doing here? Delivering Colonel Washington's coach. Where is Henri? I don't care. What's wrong? Hmm. I had a chance to impress an important newspaper publisher from New Hampshire, Mr. Wentworth, but I came up empty. Wentworth? I don't know any Wentworth who publishes a paper in New Hampshire. Well, he is who he says he is. He even paid us. He's a man of his word. See for yourself. Those aren't coins, silly. They're buttons. Buttons? I've sewed buttons like those in my father's uniforms. These buttons were minted three years ago by King George to decorate the coats of gentlemen invited to the king's birthday party. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Whoever your Mr. Wentworth is, he must be a close friend of King George. I have an idea. Quick, a pencil. My presence here will stifle free discussion. Since my appointment is the issue at hand, I will retire to allow you to speak your minds. Good evening. I received your note at my boarding house. You have facts? I interviewed the delegates, every single one of them. It took me all night to track them down. It's all there. The size of the new National Army, what General Hancock plans to do to drive the Redcoats out of Boston, it's the biggest story of the year. I told you I'd get the facts, and I'm a man of my word. I must go. I have to write my story and get it back to my paper. You're a first-rate newspaper man, James Hiller. Well done. And you're a rotten spy. <laughs> My guess is right. Mr. Wentworth is reporting to someone. The question is, who? Look! A boat! Eight men could fit in this. We need to be careful. Redcoats! I want to get closer! I'll go with you. Henri, take Moses' tool pouch. We'll meet back on the road. Hancock will be the general of the Colonial Army. John Hancock. The rumor is it's Washington. The rumor is wrong. They put the Washington story out to mislead us. Hancock will lead the rebel army, and his plans call for a march on Rhode Island. You trust your source? A gullible child. He spilled the beans. A stupid boy. Typical colonial. Grand ideas. No schooling. Easily duped. Excellent. Let's move out. Sarah! I'm here. That was frightfully awkward for a while, wasn't it? I was a fool. I wanted so badly to be a big shot journalist, I almost gave away secrets to the enemy. But you outsmarted them. You're British. How does that make you feel? If Colonel Washington is announced as General of the Army tomorrow, word will get to the British soon enough. And that man who deceived you and Henri will look like a fool. I can live with that. Look! What's happening? Finally! I'm wearing silk garments! My suit will be ruined! Henri! Great job! You know, I don't ask you for one moment to surrender your hope for a peaceful resolve to these problems. Thank you. I do pray for that. The only hope the colonies have to avoid all-out war is in the strength of our army and the strength of our resolve. I like General Washington. I hope the great men of this Congress work as hard to find peace as General Washington does to prepare the army for war. That will depend on Parliament. You know, Sarah, if things get too uncomfortable, we will find a way to get you back home. 
Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Come on! You're late! And on the issue of General of the Continental Army, we call upon George Washington. I accept this momentous duty because this Congress desires it. I beg it be remembered by every gentleman in this room that I this day declare with utmost sincerity I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Dear Mother, this is the first time I have felt that I am, in fact, living events which will be remembered by other generations. I remain with a confused heart. I pray for peace, but fear we are heading towards war. Foolish Americans, don't they understand what will happen to them? The rebels are building fortifications. They're going to force my hand. What are your orders, General Howe? We're going to have to blast them off those hills. I had hoped they'd come to their senses and spare themselves. You can see all of Boston Harbor from here. The Redcoats won't let us stay here without a fight. The men have worked all night, General Putnam. If the Lobsterbacks try and take Breed's Hill, we'll make them pay a heavy price. If the men are brave and don't panic, I'd have more confidence if we had stores of ammunition. Colonel Prescott, every shot will have to find its mark. 17 June, 1775. Dearest Mother, I am in a place called Bunker Hill near the city of Boston. <gasps> I'm glad you cannot hear the terrible sounds. The awful battles of Lexington and Concord are the cause of all this trouble. The colonists seem determined to drive our troops away from Boston. But there's a spark of good news. There's a British officer who might have some knowledge of father's whereabouts. Oh, I'm hoping to find him and learn what I can. <gasps> Please do not worry about me, Mother. I am out of harm's way. I am worried about James and Henri. They've gone to interview the rebel militia for Dr. Franklin's Gazette. <coughs> Still, I can't imagine even they would be reckless enough to get caught up in this. If nothing else, maybe this day will bring us news of Father. I promise to tell. What have we here? <gasps> Could we have taught ourselves a rebel spy? Sergeant Wellwright? It is I, Sarah Phillips. I'm a guest at the Essex House. Yes, of course, Miss Phillips. But this is no place for a British subject. These hills are crawling with rebels. I am still looking for Lieutenant Hampton. Ah, yes. The man who served under your father. But it's too dangerous for you to stay here. I'll send Hampton around after we put those rebels in their place. But I... I'll hear no more of this, young lady. I insist. Corporal, escort Miss Phillips home. This will allow you to pass through all checkpoints and rejoin us in battle. Is there ever a time you're not hungry? Only when I'm eating. You expect me to take orders from you? Who made you king? Colonel Prescott. That's who. I don't serve under Colonel Prescott. I'm with Captain Parker. Whoa! One more like that, I'll resort to fisticuffs! These men are going to fight the British? Looks to me like they'll be fighting each other. They're nervous and angry. Look, Henri, here we are at the fence at Bunker Hill. About 500 yards away is the fort at Breed's Hill. Here you can see in where the British are. Now come on, we've got to find Dr. Warren and stay away from any fighting. Who is this Dr. Warren we're looking for? An old friend of Dr. Franklin's, one of the leaders of the Massachusetts Sons of Liberty. He'll help us get our story. How will we recognize him? Sarah and I met him during Paul Revere's ride. He's a wonderful man. You're going to love him. 
And with you around, I'll be needing a doctor. So, Corporal, what's your opinion of the rebels? I have no opinion, ma'am. It's not my place. I just do my duty. Tell me, why are you looking for Lieutenant Hampton? My father is in the Ohio wilderness, and we've not heard from him. I'm told the Lieutenant may have seen him. Corporal, won't you please help me find this man who could lead me to my father? Afraid not, Miss Phillips. Orders and all. Oh! Corporal, my locket fell off. Very well. There. There you are, miss. Forgive me, Corporal, but I must find my father. Yeah! Wait! Miss Phillips! Come back! Dr. Warren! James! You must leave, son. The British will arrive shortly. Leave? But the people need to understand what's happening here. You're right, of course. I admire your courage. Gentlemen, James writes for the Pennsylvania Gazette. He wrote those wonderful stories on Paul Revere's ride and the heroic events at Concord and Lexington. Very well good. Good good boy. Boy. Is this young man a journalist too? Henri's only interested in finding the best pastry shops. Well, come along. I'm looking for General Putnam and Colonel Prescott, but Henri must go to Cambridge, away from danger. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. State your business. I'm on a special mission involving a British soldier. And exactly what mission would you be performing? This says permit bearer to pass, and that is the seal of Sergeant Wellwright. Do you recognize it? Good. Then tell me your name, soldier, so Sergeant Wellwright will know whom to have court martialed. Very well. I am seeking a Lieutenant Hampton. Do you know him? He's leading one of the companies that will take Bunker Hill. Yeah! <laughs> Phew. I wish James could have seen that. And thank goodness Mother didn't. This is mad. That's it. Come on, Starton. We're through here. You men there, return to your positions. Sorry, General Putnam, but we haven't had sleep or food. You're not paying us enough for this. We're not paying you anything. <gasps> The only payment I can offer you is freedom from the tyranny of the British Parliament. Praise be! If Dr. Warren is joining the fight, then I'm staying! Good, we need you. Dr. Warren, you couldn't have come at a better time to assume command. I wouldn't dream of assuming command from such an experienced soldier as you. I wish only to serve where I can be most useful. That, sir, would be where the Redcoats are going to attack first. Breed's Hill. There you can assume command from Colonel Prescott. General Putnam, I wish no command here. I would consider it a privilege to fight under Colonel Prescott. Need another volunteer to go fight on the hill with Dr. Warren? Thank you, soldier. But Dr. Warren, why would you risk your life as an, well, an ordinary soldier? It's ordinary soldiers who are making great sacrifices. I would be honored to stand alongside these men. Anyone can speak about his beliefs, but it's soldiers who shed their blood to make those beliefs a reality. Could you slow down? I need to write. Sorry, lad, no time. But remember, it is your duty to tell the world that we are willing to die for our freedom. You can count on me, Dr. Warren. Good man. Now it's time for Henri to go to Cambridge. Yes, sir! Run, go! Run, go! Come on! Ready, men! Beginning! James, stay back here by the fence and away from Breed's Hill. Be careful, Dr. Warren, please.
Why don't they shoot? The British are almost on top of them! They've only got five musket balls apiece, and almost no powder. Our men will have to make every shot count. Steady, men! Hold your fire until you see the whites of their eyes! I was trained to save lives, not take them. If you can't fight, we would understand. No one would think you a coward. I abhor fighting, but believe in the cause of liberty. But for freedom, we must fight. So I shall. I hate them, Redcoats. Try not to let it be about hatred, soldier. There are times when a man has to stand up for his rights, but he never has to hate. Ready? They've retreated! I am most displeased. Those ragtags turned us back. Many casualties. Shh! Henri, it is I. The reinforcements have arrived, sir more than they can imagine. We are better armed and better trained. We will take both of those hills, Sergeant. Whatever it takes, whatever it costs. Did you find the man who knew your father? He's with the British attacking the hill. Where's James? Up there, near the fighting. You heard what he just said? James has to get out of there. Can you find him? Certainement. Have your men seal off this side of the hill so the rebels cannot get reinforcements of their own? Yes, sir. Here, you may need this. It's a pass you can use to talk your way through any checkpoint. Won't you need it to find the man you're looking for? Don't worry about that. Just go. I'm sorry, Father, but I think this is what you would have wanted me to do. Okay, I'm supposed to be a newspaper writer. So write. B -b 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 Bunker Hill, J J June 17th. Today, a small, under-equipped band of colonist volunteers defeated the best the British... James! James! What are you doing here? Sarah sent me to warn you. You've got to get out of here. The British are sending more soldiers. Lots more! Oh, no. No! They're attacking a second time! Come on, let's get out of here! No, wait! They brought up artillery. And more reinforcements. I need volunteers to accompany me to the aid of Colonel Prescott on Breed's Hill. That would be folly, sir. Our men will be out of powder and gunshot before we could reach them. You're right, of course. But Dr. Warren is over there. I'm sorry, son. He's right. There's nothing to be done. We've got to retreat and save the men we can. Dr. Warren and Prescott will hold out and cover us.
Steady, men. Regroup. We hold our fire to a little close. Make the most of your ammunition. Then we'll fall back. Empty! Ah! Sons of Liberty, Massachusetts, man. Henri, make sure Sarah gets to safety. Where are you going? To find Dr. Warren. James, come back, son. Colonel Prescott! We lost the hill, James. Ran out of ammunition. One more volley and we'd have stopped him cold. Have you seen Dr. Warren? It was chaos up there. Last I saw him, he was covering our retreat. Best you come along with us to the Charlestown Neck. You might find him there. They're retreating. The hill is ours. General Gage will want to report. Tell him it was a dear-bought victory. Another such will ruin us. General, a mission to check on the wounded. Granted. I'll join you. <laughs> Dr. Warren? Has anyone seen Dr. Warren? He was behind me. Back there. Thanks. <laughs> Nearly half our men dead or wounded. It's a disaster. We might as well have lost the hill. We won the hill, Sergeant. You'd best remember that. It's just a hill, sir. Lieutenant Hampton? Lieutenant Hampton! <laughs> Corporal? You can stop looking for my brother. He was killed. Your brother? Lieutenant Hampton was my brother. But you never told me. You didn't give me a chance. I'm sorry, Miss Phillips, but there will be no help finding your father today. I'm sorry about your brother, Corporal. Thank you, Miss Phillips. <sighs> Dr. Warren! Dr. Warren! Dr. Warren? Sorry, I thought you were Dr. Warren. Dr. Warren saved my life. He saved many lives covering our retreat. He was the bravest thing i ever seen. I tried to get his body, but... Body? I'm sorry, son. Dr. Warren? Gone? But... But how can that be? He was such a good man. We lost many a good man today. Then what I will write is that the price of freedom is not cheap. James, are you all right? I'm fine, but Dr. Warren's dead. Oh no! I'm so sorry, James. I know how much you admired him. And I've got to write that the colonists lost their first real battle with the British. That will weaken our cause, the very cause for which Dr. Warren gave his life. Maybe the story is not what you think it is. What do you mean? What happened at Bunker Hill is in the eye of the beholder. We, uh, the British, sustained hundreds of casualties. Really? I was in that camp. They may have taken Bunker Hill, but they feel like they lost. This was a blow. You were in their camp? Looking for the man who knew your father? And? Killed. I'm sorry, Sarah. Did Henri find you? Of course I did. James, who won the battle? I don't know that anyone did. But our job is to report. So let's get back to Philadelphia. What's the matter, Henri? I've never seen you throw away food. After all this, I'm suddenly not so hungry. Quite a story, you two. Dr. Warren was quite a man. He sacrificed so much to help others live. A lot of people made sacrifices at Bunker Hill. 
You can tell Dr. Franklin I'm ready to print. What in blazes could be jamming the works this time? Pastry? Why are you looking at me? Dr. Franklin, Moses is ready when you approve our story. Now let's see. Hmm, the colonists suffered heavy casualties, but withstood the best the British had to offer, defeated only by a lack of powder. There's only one thing I should like to add. By standing together, the colonial militias proved they have the will to take on the powerful British army. The name Bunker Hill will be remembered in history as the event that turned a Massachusetts rebellion into America's revolution. The king has lost his colonies. Dearest mother, though I am well, my heart is heavy. I regret that my long journey to Boston yielded no word of father. Sadly, the fighting at Bunker Hill resulted in the death of Lieutenant Hampton. Many others died as well, and along with them, I fear any hope of peace also died at Bunker Hill. We must accept that you and I will not be together soon. This will be a long and costly uprising. I remain your loving daughter, Sarah. July 1775. Dearest mother, this has been the hardest, hottest, bumpiest trip I've ever made. Thank heavens it's almost over. We are 10 days out of Philadelphia and should arrive in Boston any time now. General Washington is to take command of the Continental Army. And Dr. Franklin has assigned James and me to report on it. James has embarked on a great experiment. How do you know where these birds will go? They're homing pigeons. The Gazette will get news from the war before any other newspaper. Fly away home, little brother. He's headed north. I keep telling you, we ought to eat them. Here we are! I can't wait to see the army. I can't wait to eat! This is an army? General Washington takes command of colonial forces in Boston. The general has begun to impose discipline on the eager and patriotic but disorganized group of citizen soldiers facing General Howe's formidable British regulars. I don't know how General Washington will turn this rabble into an army. A more sloppy, disrespectful, bullheaded group this journalist has never seen. But Dr. Franklin, this is supposed to be James's report from the front. What you read is not at all like what he said in his dispatch. Editor's privilege. Besides, if the army is to become a real army, they'll need money from Congress. And Congress won't give it if they think the army is hopeless. It was a brave thing to let the kids go along, but I can't help but worry about them. They'll be fine, Moses. James has the makings of a fine reporter. And Sarah? Well, if either of those boys gets out of line, Sarah will put them straight soon enough. Have you spotted any of James's pigeons yet? I've seen plenty of pigeons, but none of them look like war correspondents. I told him that the distance might be too great. Just as well he uses the army gallopers as a precaution. General Washington has his work cut out for him. He has to strengthen the area around the entire city and somehow whip this bunch of farmers and layabouts into an army.
Present Adams. Would you say that rations here are low? I would say rations here are non-existent. We throw together whatever we can find. I've heard that things will change now that General Washington is in charge. I've heard there's an island in the south where dogs can talk and wear hats. Do you really work for a newspaper? Yes, indeed. Dr. Benjamin Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. Pennsylvania? What business is this of theirs? Dr. Franklin says all the colonies have a common interest in this war. That's so. Well, I'm just interested in yours truly and his part of this war, which will be over and done with in 52 days. 52? How can you be so sure of that? That's when my enlistment is up. That's when most of these men will be on their way home. What if the British are still in Boston? They're welcome to it as far as I'm concerned. Look, laddie, I'm a storekeeper. Dry goods mostly, some fribbles for the ladies and such. I can't afford to let my business do for itself. And that there's Jeremiah Braddock. He's a farmer. Who's going to bring in his hay and sweet corn if he's stuck down here parading around for Mr. Washington? What are these children doing here? Take it easy, Stryker. They're doing no harm. This one says he writes for a newspaper. Really? And you, Sprout, what are you supposed to be? I'm not supposed to be anything. I am Henri Richard Maurice Dutrois Lefebvre. Did you hear that, boys? This tadpole's got a whole laundry list for a name. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you read? Of course. Is there something you would like me to read for you? You little scamp. farmer from Virginia. Everyone knows nothing good ever came out of the South. I hope you're as good at fighting redcoats as you are at chasing children. <laughs> James spends more and more time each day with General Washington's aides, trying to find out and report to Dr. Franklin the Army's plans. But only as long as the naval guns in the harbor remain silent. I'm afraid we still don't know if the pigeons are getting through. I thought Philadelphia was that way. Are you sure these aren't British pigeons? We only have one doctor. Poor Dr. Marston, for the men here and over at the school. And you know, he's not well himself. Were these men wounded in the battle at Bunker Hill? Yes, but most are just sick. It's a fever that takes them mostly. We have no ice. I wonder what devotion to duty or country would make men go through something like this. We're fighting for our liberty, young lady. Simple as that. If these New Englanders don't know how to drill yet, they certainly know how to dig. These hardy colonists know more about building than fighting. They never had an army, but they have carved a nation out of a wilderness. No one knows how long the British will wait before they attack. Or, indeed, why they're waiting at all. We can only be thankful for the time to ready this army. 
December 1775. Dearest Mother, we've been in this camp for nearly five months. A beautiful autumn has come and gone, as have all the leaves on the trees. Henri stays out most of the day and comes in with a bag full of odds and ends he's collected from the battlefield. He insists there will be a big market for souvenirs of the great battle for Boston. And now, as if he didn't have enough on his shoulders, General Washington has a new worry. The enlistment of half of the men here is up and many of them are going home. In this freezing cold, General Washington's army is melting away in the face of a dangerous enemy. Men of New Hampshire, you signed on with this army for six months' service. That enlistment is now up, and you want to go home. I cannot blame you for that, and I cannot stop you from going. I'm here to appeal to you to stay. Six months ago, you and your neighbors stood on that hill, Bunker Hill, and heroically fought off a superior force. The enemy is still behind his barricades, and he is not leaving until we make him do so. He is not going home but neither are many of your friends and neighbors. They died in that fight on the hill, defending their honor, defending an idea. That idea is freedom. Before you go, I ask you to think about the men you knew and loved who will forever man their post on that hill. <laughs> And this is Colonel Henry Knox, Colonel of the Artillery. There are 56 British cannons waiting for us at Fort Ticonderoga, captured this past May. Knox needs men to move those guns here, to Boston, to bear on the enemy. We need artillery to drive the British from this city. Who will go? The time is past when we think of ourselves as New Hampshire men or Virginians. We are Americans, and we have to stand as one. Are you with me? Aye. Yes. Come here, come here. Colonel Knox and the promise of his cannon seems to have convinced at least some of the men to stay. Now all they have to do is move them 500 miles over winter mountains. Somehow. Since I was there when the cannons were captured, I'm going back to see how he does it. Will the pigeons come here or go on to Philadelphia? Philadelphia, I hope. Be safe. I'm going to visit with some of the new recruits in from Maine. Want to come along? No, I... Uh, I've got an assignment of my own. Promise me you'll introduce me to Dr. Franklin when I make it down to Philadelphia. That's a promise. I've read every edition of his Poor Richard's Almanac. Really? I used to have a bookshop down in Boston. Ah, here it is. Poor Richard's Almanac. Never failed to find something useful in these pages. 
Listen to this. If you would not be forgotten as soon as you're dead and rotten, either write things worth the reading or do things worth the writing. Well then, Colonel, you do the doing and I'll do the writing. All right, that's enough. This is dreadful. This show opens on Saturday night, and you people will never be ready. General Howe himself will be here, and he's issued a special invitation to General Washington himself to come and bring his own noose. Take it from Reggie's chorus. Reggie! From the top, and for heaven's sake, will you two decide on who's where in the cow suit? Yankee Doodle came to Boston, thought he'd beat the Tommies. Got a look at Cage's guns and ran right home to Mommy. Yankee Doodle went to war, Yankee Doodle dandy. Thought the Brits would run away, but he found us too handy. Are hey, you? Get back here! You say they plan this entertainment for Saturday night? Yes, sir. And they expressly invited you to attend. Well, that is a tempting invitation, isn't it? Perhaps an invitation for us to launch an attack. This is just a quick raid, gentlemen. We don't have enough men for a full attack. Bring back whatever you can carry, especially powder. Let's move out! The Yankee Doodle came to Boston, thought he'd beat the Tommies. Sorry to interrupt the entertainment, but it seems General Washington has launched an attack on Bunker Hill. Come along, men! General Washington's captured much needed supplies in his raid, and let General Howe know that the Americans will attack without warning. James's pigeons have all come here instead of flying to Philadelphia, and I can't get them to leave. James has been gone with Colonel Knox for over a month now. I'm beginning to worry about them. More new recruits are coming in each day, and this army becomes stronger each day. What General Washington has done is nothing short of a miracle. He doesn't say much, but he inspires confidence and obedience by the sheer force of his presence.
weren't there last night. British leave Boston. Continental Army victorious in siege operation. It's a great victory, Dr. Franklin. Yes, and we needed one. I imagine those redcoats are halfway home by now. I imagine they're halfway to New York. This war is far from over, but I suppose we should celebrate. At least Boston is free. Looks like one of James's pigeons. Here you go. June 28th. We've reached Newark and should be in New York by tomorrow morning. That dispatch is months old. Where on earth have you been, Bird? Wherever he's been, he's probably ready for a nap. Dr. Franklin says we should come back to Philadelphia as soon as possible. What will happen here? We'll keep a garrison here, but the bulk of the army and new troops from the southern colonies will be gathering in New York. How long do you think the war will last, Colonel Knox? I don't know, Sarah, but we have to be ready for as long as it takes. The new flag! And a new army! A worthy army. An army we can be proud of. Dearest Sarah, you wrote that you would send a letter to me every day, yet I have not received one in ages. I pray that you are well. I have not heard from your father either, but I know mail service to the Ohio frontier is non-existent. Now here is the message I most urgently wish you to receive. Please remain in Philadelphia. Now that war has broken out, that is the best way to ensure that our family will one day be happily and healthily reunited. Although I am comforted that your care is in the sure hands of Dr. Franklin. I do hope dearly to hear from you soon. Your loving mother. said no news is good news wasn't in the newspaper game. There must be something you could write about. Maybe, but we haven't heard from any of our correspondents in two weeks. Look what I found in the streets! Litter? A letter! The postman must have dropped it. Let me see. You shouldn't read somebody else's mail. We have to deliver it to the rightful owner. But we are the rightful owner. It's addressed to the Pennsylvania Gazette. It's news, right? Am I right? Oh boy, ask and ye shall receive. A report about British troop movements. The Redcoats are moving south from Boston. Are you sure? Who sent it? The Fox. That's a strange name. Could be a spy. Or it could be code. Who cares? We finally have a story, and I got it for us. Maybe Henri's right. At least it's something. Come on, Moses. Let's dust off the printing press. I'm looking for a Sarah Phillips. We've got a Sarah Phillips. Is she here? I'm carrying a letter for her. Henri, go get Sarah. Who do you think I am? Your assistant? Yes. I'll get Sarah. You're a captain? Captain Hodges, at your service. And you're carrying the mail? I'm on my way to rejoin General Washington's troops in Boston. 
I was entrusted with this letter during my trip to Fort Pittsburgh. I bet that's from Sarah's father. We have news, Captain. Big news. British troops are moving south from Boston. That can't be true. It's true. It's right here in this letter. Do you know this Fox person? No, but it's addressed to us. We're putting out a special edition of the Gazette to spread the word. I wouldn't do that. Do you see this letter mark? Looks like an F. It is an F. I don't understand. What does it mean? It's code. There's a secret message hidden somewhere inside. I don't see any secret message. You can't see it. The real message is between the lines, written in invisible ink. Invisible ink? Both sides are using invisible ink. In case a letter is lost or captured, the Redcoats would like nothing more than for you to print this in your paper. Why? They want us to think they're moving south, so we'll be unprepared when they spring their real plan. We almost fell for their trap! You must be very careful about the mail. It can't be trusted. The British control it. How does this invisible ink work? I mean, what good is a secret message if nobody can see it? There's a special treatment. We'll need a man of science to help us. I know just the man. The letter F means fire. If it was marked with an A, I'd have to treat the letter with acid to make the invisible ink visible. Gather round. The invisible ink is a mixture of ferrous sulfate and water. The heat from the candle oxidizes the mixture and makes it possible to read what is written. That's fantastic! Very clever! What does the secret message say? Exactly opposite of what they wanted you to know. The British are not leaving Boston. It will be up to General Washington to force them out. You were. Somebody wanted to see me? Sarah Phillips? Yes? I've carried this a long way. It's from my father. He's on the Ohio frontier. Oh, thank you. Of course. And now I must be on my way. Be careful. All of you. It's only the second letter I've gotten from him since I've been here. What does he say? When is he coming back? Is he all right? He doesn't say, and this letter is two months old, and I can't write him back to ask. There's no mail service to the frontier, and I can't even tell Mother I've heard from Father, because she isn't getting the letters I send her. She's not. You write to her every day. But they're not getting through. Captain Hodges said the British control the mail. I'm going to investigate. And I'm going to assistant investigate. They're going through the mail. It's an offense, an outrage. Ben, someone went through my mail. It's an offense, an outrage. Fences can be mended, Mr. Adams. My comments about Mr. Dickinson, as critical, even petty as they were, were never meant for publication. Whoever stole my letter printed it to humiliate me and drive a wedge between Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. Here comes Mr. Dickinson now. Perhaps you can make peace with him. Mr. Dickinson, may I have a word with you, please? He's as stubborn as I am. Can you blame him, John? You called him a piddling genius. Yes, in a private letter. Ben, we must fix the mail system. If we can't trust the post, how are we to freely express ourselves? The publication of my letter hurt our cause and aired a division in our ranks just when it's most important for us to show unity of purpose. Order, gentlemen, order. A letter that I wrote to General James Warren was also intercepted. Stolen is a better word. Yes, stolen by the Tories and published in the Boston papers. A personal letter, mind you, full of blasphemous opinions and conspiratorial outbursts. You must learn to control your temper. 
I admit I have a defective character. However, Dr. Franklin, you designed the Colonial Postal Service at the request of the Crown. And now a man can't write a word without risking it appearing in print! <laughs> Order! Dr. Franklin, since you are the father of modern postal practices, I move you be appointed head of a committee to devise a new colonial postal service, independent of the British Crown. In the meantime, we mustn't use the royal postal system, unless you would be comfortable with King George himself reading what you've written. In the meantime, we have to find a way to get this load of mail through to New York. We can't spare another soldier. I'll take it. That's very brave of you, James, but it could be dangerous. I'll be careful. You'll have to be more than careful. Count on me, sir. I'm going to have to do just that. This load of mail contains several important dispatches to General Washington. They must not fall into British hands. I'm going to. It's not safe. But you're carrying a letter to my mother with news of father. I want to see with my own eyes that it gets on the mail boat for London. Besides, I'm twice the rider you are. You are not! And two are not! Sarah, if our colonial army possessed an ounce of your pluck, we'd have nothing to fear. We'll see who's twice the rider. I want you both to follow Route 1, the postal road connecting Philadelphia to New York which I established 20 years ago as Royal Postmaster General. I set up a series of milestones that will lead you to New York. The milestones are placed at regular intervals all the way to Boston. My postal system was a model of efficiency, but that was before our current troubles. Shouldn't we have passed another milestone by now? Or two? We're in New Jersey. Maybe they don't go this far. Dr. Franklin said he set them up all the way to Boston. Isn't that one? Oh, no! Oh. They're the ones who bribed the postman. They're Tories. They're waiting to intercept the mail. What are we going to do? Maybe we should turn around and go back. Then the mail won't get through. General Washington won't get his dispatches. Maybe they'll let us through. But there's a British soldier with them. British soldiers are not monsters, you know. That's because you're British. May I remind you you're also British? OK, have it your way. Why don't you go ahead? I have to water my horse. I'll meet you at the blockade. Hurry. <laughs> Whoa. Now, why would a pretty young lass such as yourself be out riding alone? Thank you, sir. You are most kind. I am not riding alone. My friend James is watering his horse. He'll be along. And what is the nature of the business that takes you to New York? Well, you see... Ah, here he comes. Whoa! <laughs> now that he's here, may we pass? I'd still like to know the nature of your business. We're visiting a sick friend. Sarah got a letter that was weeks old saying that a dear friend of ours may perish soon. We only hope we're not too late. Oh, well, in that case, please move along. We won't detain you further. Thank you, kind sir. Your servant, milady. That was a shameless teradiddle you told them about our perishing friend. I know. It was wrong. The truth would have done just as well. I was afraid to take the chance. James, you haven't got the mailbag. You think we would have made it through if I did? But where is it? Where they won't find it. James, what have you done with the mail? We'll sneak back for it when the sun goes down. You are shameless. Do you want your letter to get through or not? I want you to know that I disapprove of your deception with all my heart. What if we get caught? Now that we've lied, the consequences will be harsher, I'm sure. But you saw when we rode back through. They're gone now. Did you hear something? Sarah, quit worrying. We're almost there. <gasps> 
something you forgot to tell us? Run, Sarah! Have we here? So, you've led your friends here. It's not much farther where we left the horses. Just keep running. I told you this would be trouble. But we can't make it. We've got to. Keep on them. They've got a load of mail. By what right are you detaining us? Like she said, by what right? By what right are you carrying the mail? You don't look like royal postal employees. I'm sure you stole the mail from those men. I don't care if you did, so you might as well admit it. They probably stole it themselves. I purposely set off that gunpowder explosion to distract them so we could rescue the mail. Whose side are you on, anyway? We are volunteers. We're on the side of helpless colonists. So are we. And you prove it by stealing their mail? Have you ever heard of Dr. Benjamin Franklin? Who hasn't? We're carrying the mail for him. Have you some proof of that? I do. Dr. Franklin asked us to deliver these letters to New York. Well, this is Franklin's signature. So you are official couriers. That is a very different matter. Congress has asked Dr. Franklin to look into the possibility of forming an independent postal system for the colonies. Did everybody hear that? We're breaking away from the royal postal system! Wonderful! <laughs> you have no idea what good news that is. Those Tories wanted the mail. I'm sure they did. And may we ask who you are? You may, if you can keep a secret. I can. And you? Of course. We began some years ago as the New Jersey Committee of Correspondence. We were a volunteer organization dedicated to spreading news throughout the colonies. Our mission was to unite the colonies through better communication. We sent messages to the colonies about the British threat. We copied press reports and intelligence messages gathered from our spies, and we spread them throughout the colonies. Now we still work together, keeping tabs on Tory spies, like the men who tried to steal your mail. Then you'll let us carry our bag to New York? Let you? We'll help you. We'll supply an armed escort all the way to New York. You see, I told you my plan was a good one. But you could have gotten us in trouble. She's not kidding. The British would gladly imprison any one of us in this room for what we're doing. You two amaze me with your courage. You're too kind. He's right, Sarah. You showed some real bravery. Why not? I've got you to inspire me even if I don't always approve of your tricks. All the Committee of Correspondence wants to do is spread the truth. The truth is important. It's everything. But if the truth they are spreading leads to treason and actions against the Crown... It's still truth, and they should be allowed to spread it. Well, I don't approve of the way you lied. We wouldn't have gotten this far. I believe in truth, not lies. Look, we're almost to New York because of my lie. We were almost stopped because of your lie. We're almost to New York because of the New Jersey Committee of Correspondence. So you do approve of what they're doing? I suppose I do, in spite of myself. We'll make a patriot out of you yet. I already am a patriot. At least in New York, we'll be back among subjects still loyal to the king. They're not all loyalists. We've brought the mail all the way from Philadelphia! Yay! This entire mailbag has been unseen by British eyes! Why are we stopping off in this tavern to brag about our exploits? This is the end of the line, Sarah. The mail is distributed here. The volunteer mail carriers divide up the letters at the bar according to destination points and fan out to the different parts of town to deliver them. What about my letter to my mother? 
It's going to London, not a part of New York. One of the volunteers takes the overseas letters to the harbor and puts them on the first ship headed across the Atlantic. So we've done it? Yes! My mother will get her letter? She will, Sarah. You can count on it. James, I'm so happy I could kiss you. Sarah, please. I've suffered enough at the hands of the British. Dr. Franklin, your report is most complete. I suggest that we waste no time in naming a Postmaster General. Because of his expertise, experience, and genius, and as a slap in the face to the British Crown which saw fit to remove him from his post, I put into nomination the name of Dr. Benjamin Franklin for the Office of Colonial Postmaster General. All in favor? Aye! All opposed? It's unanimous. May I present to you the first man in history to hold the title independently of any king or royal principality, Postmaster General Franklin. Thank you, fellow conspirators. I accept this honor if for no other reason than to make the king's blood boil. Dr. Franklin, what will be your first official act? To establish a line of posts from Falmouth and New England to Savannah in Georgia, and to employ a fleet of trustworthy, incorruptible men. And neither rain, sleet, snow, nor dark of night will keep them from their appointed rounds. Twenty-seven, July, seventeen seventy-five. Dearest mother, I have read your last letter thirty times which is one time for each day I waited for it. I am so relieved that you received my letter about father. I am relieved that you received any letter from me at all. Thanks to James and Dr. Franklin, I have a new appreciation of the importance of the postal service and of communication in general. How can the colonists hope to survive these difficult times without communication? Even if I don't agree with all of their stated aims, I do so admire the work that Dr. Franklin has done and continues to do in an effort to make this gigantic world a little smaller so that, even if we are separated by geography, we may all be united in understanding. Franklin, named Postmaster General of New Independent Colonial Postal Service. 